All right, so I have a question here. What is the most addictive RPG you've ever played? Easy for me, Chrono Cross, my favorite RPG of all time. That's it, thanks for watching. No, not really. Actually, Chrono Cross, it is my favorite of all time, but it is not the most addictive RPG I've ever played. I love Chrono Cross because of its story, because of its music, because some of the gameplay mechanics, the battle system, but the truth is there are some really annoying parts ever since the first time I played the game that every time I get into these parts, these areas, these dungeons, these puzzles, whatever, they're kind of annoying, they annoy me, they piss me off and I just want to get over them. So I guess I should start by clarifying what is the meaning of the word or, or the term addictive in my opinion when it comes to video games, right? To me, an addictive RPG is one that you can just play over and over again, just play for endless hours, like you look at the watch, you lose time, man, you look at the watch and you're like, wow, two hours have elapsed since I started playing? I can't believe it. And this is a game where usually you don't get stuck. You never get stuck, so it's so fluid, it just flows through, flows through time, you just keep playing over and over again until probably you beat it, okay? That is what I think, it's an addictive RPG. So you will think that maybe the Suikoden series or the Fire Emblem series, which I love with all my heart and soul, with a passion, and I do find them really addictive, will probably be my answer, right? No, because as much as I love those games, there are parts or missions or maps, etc. Parts of the game that I really find annoying, that I find like, ugh, frustrating, tedious. Like, I just want to get over these parts so I can continue with the parts that I actually love or that I actually find addictive. So what is that one game for me that I have found in my entire life, that RPG, the most addictive of them all? That game is Might and Magic Clash of Heroes. This game... Oh my god, this is a Canadian RPG. It was made by a company called Capybara Games. These guys specialize in mobile games. But this version here was the first one. They specifically made this game for the Nintendo DS. And this is the only physical version it exists of the game. It's a Canadian RPG. What kind of game is this? Well, this is... Wow, it's a puzzle RPG with a battle system that's turn-based and strategic at the same time. Let's just say it's like they turn the bejeweled system and turned it into an RPG. Apparently the game was so damned good and so successful that they made a remake version on the PS3, the Xbox 360, PC, mobile devices like the Android. It came out for everything back in the day. It was released in 2009. This version, the Nintendo DS version, was released in 2009. So it's been 11 years of this fantastic game just grabbing gamers and players and turning them into addicts. Like it even says here, innovative and undeniably addictive. Oh yeah, by IGN. Eh, for once I agree with something IGN says. So this is one of the many spin-offs of the Might and Magic series. And it takes place in a dark fantasy universe. You take control of five different protagonists. You move on in these uh, maps, these areas, usually with a sidekick character. This character aids you, but it aids you more story-wise. Gameplay-wise, it does nothing. I mean, you, this character does not participate in battles. What's so addictive about this game is that it's very balanced. The challenge is there. Some of the puzzle battles can be quite challenging, but they're short. I mean, it's not like in Fire Emblem or some of the Suikoden games where you get into these battles and you're there for like half an hour or even more. You die and then oh, you're like frustrated. You gotta go back to the beginning of the mission and redo everything, right? And change your strategy. Here, you do have to change your strategy because you fucked up. But these battles are short. I mean, they, normal battles, they usually take less than five minutes sometimes. If you know what you're doing, two or three minutes and you're done. Boss battles or puzzle battles where you need to do certain specific things to beat that battle. They can take up to 10 or 15 minutes, 20 minutes max, and I'm exaggerating. That's why this game is so addictive, because you save right before that battle, and then you 
go into that battle, you die, and you want to do it again. You want to try something different. That's why this game is so addictive. So these battles just take a little bit of the bejewel system, this puzzle system that your enemy is at the top of the screen and you play in the bottom of the screen. So in these battlefields you take control of an army of creatures. And of course you gotta match these creatures by type of creature, type of monster, and then match the type of creature to the bigger types of monsters. So these battles are played in turns and you gotta think strategically when or how to move your creatures, where to move them, where do you want to position them to attack and beat the crap out of your enemy. If, you're, if any of the enemy's creatures go past your creatures, which can act as shields sometimes, they damage your character. And if obviously if you reach zero HP, it's game over. So this is a game you can just keep playing over and over again. And yes, there are some annoying puzzles here that can just frustrate you, but they didn't frustrate the entire experience. Like you want to switch the console off and ah, just give it a rest for a few hours or a few days. In my case, that never happened. Like, I kept battling these same bosses or these same battles over and over again until I beat them. I swear, whenever I start playing this game, time flies by. I play the game, and two hours later, or at least an hour and a half later, I look at the watch and I'm, like, surprised every single time. I played through this game, like, 10 million times already. Wow, it's so goddamn addictive. And I don't know which is the best version, the perfect version of it all because I've only played the Nintendo DS version but if the vanilla version is extremely addictive I can only imagine how much better the others are. Mighty Magic, Clash of Heroes, Canadian RPG, puzzle, turn-based strategy, weird game but weird in a good sense, good story, good characters, good music, excellent battle mechanics and just an overly addictive gameplay mechanics. This is my pick for this video. As much as I love games like Chrono Cross or the Suikoden games or the Persona games, which are actually very addictive to a Fire Emblem, this is my pick above them all in terms of addiction. All right, guys, that's it. Time for you to answer these questions yourselves in the comment section below. And no MMORPGs. Come on, really. Be reasonable. <laughs> Thanks for watching.